All right, we are live. All right, peace to the girls. Peace to the girls on earth. J Ben's the light to Hori Ja. We here. Now, in this live right here, what we're going to be going over is some cyclomancy, the secret of psychic control, the secret of psychic power control by Frank Rudolph Young. Now, this is a text that was recommended to me by Brother Panic from some lectures of Brother Panic that I seen. I saw he was talking about cyclomancy as a great text to get in order to learn, really get in tune when it comes to your know, psychic ability. So this is my first time ever going through it. So I decided that I'm going to take y'all along with me when it comes to going through this text. So let's get it, man. Let's get it, man. We're going to jump in it. You feel me? So Cyclomancy by Frank Rudolph Young. All right, hold up. What this book will do for you. This book shows you how to develop amazing mystical powers, powers of healing, materialization, prophecy, thought transference, and others even more startling. It clearly proves that magic really exists and shows how without so much as lifting a finger, incredible results may be achieved, all right? Cyclomancy, another name for white magic, is simply the use of certain hidden powers that we all possess, powers given to us long before books were invented, forgotten powers, aka stuff that has dormant within us that we all have. It's just that in our modern day society, you know, we're not using these things in our everyday lives today because we have religion, you know, that shuts down our psychic abilities. We have religion that that freaking shuts down our natural abilities as gods on the planet, as gods in this plane. You feel what I'm saying? We have to work all these nine to fives, eat all these GMO bullshit foods and all that. You feel what I'm saying? But anyways, for example, like most people, you probably don't know how to move objects without touching them, but you still possess the power to do it, of course. This power lies sleeping within you right now. So do many others. Powers like x-ray vision, astral projection, hypnotic uh, mental attraction, and power here and to name just a few. In every area of life, you find that cyclomancy can bring you incredible results. For example, with x-ray vision, as this book shows you, the psychic master sees through brick walls, solid steel, and granite, perceives what goes on in the adjoining room or in some place nearby. With psychic power vision, he reads passages from closed books, reads sealed letters, and observes the contents of locked steel boxes. The very ground over which he treads grows transparent to him, and he can peer down into its depths. Inside the earth, he can discover vein, veins of min mineral, coal, oil, and underground steam streams. This sounds like some Superman stuff right here. I'm with it, though, because I know they put the truth in the movies and the lies in real life. You feel what I'm saying? So all the truth, all the, sh all the stuff to what we could really do, you feel what I'm saying? That's all in the movies. That's all in the TV shows, the cartoons, the anime, all of that, man. And yet these magic techniques are not difficult to use at all. On the contrary, they require no usual, unusual abilities, no expensive equipment of any kind. Just read the instructions and do the exercises and you may awaken astonishing powers you never dreamed possible. All right. What kind of powers? Powers like these. One, the power to see close up from a great distance with your astral telescope. Two, the power to extract the past history of a strange object merely by holding it in your hand. All right. The power to find out with psychometry what is going on at a certain place at a certain time without being there. The power to know, number four, the power to know what people look like before you even see them. Number five, the power to the power to travel with your astral body number six the power to extend your astral arm and move objects with it number seven the power to see into the future with a crystal ball number eight the power to reduce and stay slim without starvation we get into some heavy stuff and this is sure this is just the introduction man we ain't even get into the material yet and still, that's just the beginning. You'll see how many glamorous, unforgettable personalities use but one little trick of cyclomancy, as will be explained, to catapult themselves into fame and fortune. 
and how you may do the same if you so desire. What this means to you is this. You should be able to fascinate others with your thoughts and trance them with your grace of movement. Increase your muscle power up to 10 times with your mind alone. You feel me? Arouse intense desire in the opposite sex with your mere presence. Shit, nigga, I already do that. And draw people to you like bees to honey. It's all here, spelled out for you step by step with complete, easy to follow directions. You'll see how to bring your mate to you without asking. How to command people to do what you want them to do. Want them to. Without uttering a sound or lifting one little finger. How to keep expanding your circle living of acquaintances until you have virtually an entire army of loyal friends and boosters. I, I mean, I get what he's saying. I understand this, but like, I feel like you don't need some psychic power just, you know, to get girls and shit like that, you know, you feel me? I feel, I feel like that part is like, you know what I'm saying? You don't need all that. You feel me? Hold on. I'm about to call. I'm about to call up my girl right now. Hold on. I'm about to call up one of my girls right now. It's one of my wives. Hold on. I'm going to ask her straight up, like, do we need all these different powers? Like. You know what I'm saying? We don't need all this extra shit just to get women and all that different shit. You feel me? Like, let's see if she answered her. I'm sorry. Tough. Nah, we're going we gonna to call up number two. Real quick. We're going to call up number two real quick. Hold on. Cause we gotta get, we gotta get to the source, you know what I'm saying? We gotta get to the source. Damn, bang my shit. All right, number that's number two. All right, we're gonna, all right, we're gonna call up number three. We're gonna call up number three, then. Fuck you. <laughs> we're gonna call number three, then. Like, I don't know why. He's not answering the phone. I mean, maybe it's because it's late. Damn, it's 12 o'clock in the morning. All right, tough. Fuck it. Let's just continue. Let's just continue. All right, Astonishing Secrets Revealed at Last. You'll find in this book secrets suppressed for centuries by well-meaning but mistaken authorities who fear what might happen if each and every one of us knew the staggering powers we all possess. All right. Now, that's a fact, though, because the powers that be, men, these people, they went through great lengths and they put in a lot of energy in order to destroy the spiritual uh, systems of the past of our ancient ancestors and whatnot, man. So, <clears throat> the forbidden wisdom suppressed for centuries and used by some who knew it for their own purposes. You too can now draw upon these mighty powers and work a miracle in your life. Yes, it's true. In these pages, you'll discover cyclomancy, the one true form of magic that will enable you to reap a golden harvest of wisdom, understanding, power, and love. You'll discover how to seed the inner tru truth of things with the strange and wonderful third eye, your pineal gland. Okay, so we're talking about activating the pineal. All right, cool. How to win back a suitor or facilitating spouse. Attract people in your general locality who feel as you do about a certain project or idea. Draw to you needed knowledge or information with the secret of psychic power control. <clears throat> and yet all this is, a merely, is merely a tiny sampling of the vast wisdom and penetrating insight with this remarkable, which this remarkable book offers you. All right. Instantly, your life is changed. If it's money you want, try the amazing materialization techniques in lesson 20. If you want to find home, expensive clothing, or jewelry, cyclamenses, you draw these things into your life with ease. This is surely as a light of the sun shines through your window. All right. All right. You know, I, I feel like we understand what, what the, the gist of it now. So I, I'm going to just skip past the rest of the introduction or whatever. We're just going to get straight into chapter one. Or lesson one or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? We're going to get straight into lesson one. And yeah, so there's a table of contents. Lesson one, how the fantastic potential of primitive autoconscious can work for you. Two scientific proofs of the pudding. 
composition in your primitive autoconscious, descriptions of the 10 parts of your primitive autoconscious, three steps for driving your psychic power into any part of your body, the dynamic concealed in your protoplasmic irritability, the disadvantages of command adaptation, uh, what merely developing 1% of your primitive autoconscious can do for you. Lesson two, how to put your conscious mind, your sensations, recording center, and your organ control center under psychic power control. This shit deep. How to increase the drive of your psychic power command. Seven exercises for ordering your conscious mind with your psychic power commands. How to develop your timing with psychic power control. How to intens intensify the power of volition. Exercises for keener thinking for psychic power control. How miraculous feats are performed through psychic power control of the sensations recording center. How to put your sensations recording center and your organs control center under psychic power control. How to develop spatial discrimination. How to put your organs control center under psychic power control. All right. Lesson three, how to put your muscle coordination center under psychic power control. All right, you know what? We're going to skip past the table of contents. Y'all can just read that stuff for yourselves. We're going to get straight into lesson one real quick. And I think just for the sake of this live and the sake of just like, yeah, just for the sake of just this one live, we're going to keep it simple. And we're just going to go over just lesson one in this live. If what I'm saying, we're just going to go over lesson one and see what that got to offer for us. And I think that's going to, lesson one will just be what will conclude this live. So, all right, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. How the fantastic potential of your primitive autoconscious can work for you. Okay, say less. All right. So, lesson one, page one. Now we get into the meat and potatoes, the substance of the law. Let's get into other other book I'm in. Let's get it. Okay. Your sleeping primitive autoconscious. Your primitive autoconscious is your instinctive prehistoric mind. As life advanced from the more instinctive stage of the fish, amphibia, reptiles, and birds to the more intellectual stage of the higher apes and man, it found less and less need for the remarkable control exerted over it by its primitive autoconscious and more and more need for its reasoning powers. Man, as a consequence, lost the staggering psychic and muscular control with which the primitive autoconscious endowed the older but lower forms of life. He evolved as a substitute of comparatively thick cerebral cortex, the outer gray covering of his brain, which houses his conscious and subconscious minds. When you were growing up, in fact, you lost still more of your primitive autoconscious. It was better developed in you anatomically, as the embryologists have discovered when you were an infant. Your cerebral cortex was thinner than two, which indicates that your reasoning powers are even less significant at that stage of your life and therefore interfere less with your primitive autoconscious. It has turned out, however, that your occupation and your everyday life in the onward march of civilization are in greater need than ever before of your primitive autoconscious. Important decisions no longer depend solely upon clear-headed thinking, as Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson have implied. Others like Clark Gable, Rudolph Valentino, Gene Harlow, and obviously Marilyn Monroe and other unforgettable motion picture glamour stars use but one little trick of their unknown selves, as will be explained later, to catapult themselves into fame and fortune. Your logic and your reasoning, as well as your physical skills, <clears throat> can help you just so far. Your instinct or your primitive autoconscious takes over the stage after that and sometimes completely disrupt your most thoroughly studied conclusions that have been based on your keenest logic and skill. You want to take a sip of water? Fortunately, you have not lost your primitive autoconscious. It still constitutes a large section of your brain, and it still functions in you involuntarily or instinctively. A staggering psychic and muscular control still lies dormant within you as demonstrated by the unbelievable achievements which people are capable of when under hypnosis. Its control, furthermore, can be reawakened in you and used consciously for 
performing the fantastic. For example, you probably no longer can wiggle your ears at will. I can. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Shit, y'all can't. Y'all can't see that shit, but y'all see that? I can. I can though. But you still possess the muscles to do it. You could, if you wish, encourage these muscles to wiggle your wiggle your ears again. That's funny that I just so happen to be able to do that. You can acquire incredible psychic and physiological power through reawakening even a fraction of your primitive autoconscious. You can use it to develop unusual health, fascinate others with your thoughts, entrance them with your grace of movement, draw people to you like bees to honey, control the minds, control their minds even from great distances, learn any skill in a fraction of the time or before, arouse intense sexual desire to opposite sex with your mere presence, increase your muscle power at times, your mind alone, star at any sport, talent, improve your eyesight and your hearing immeasurably, win back a facilitating suitor, wavering husband. Uh, all right, cool. Draw to you. Uh, we, we're just going to keep reading it. Extract the past history of an object by merely holding it in your hand. Find out quickly what is going on in a certain place thousands of miles away without even being there. Find the location of another mine in the same general locality as that of another. See and hear from enormous distances. Attract people in your general locality who feel as you do about a certain project or idea. Draw to you needed knowledge and information. Contract the past and future with your mind. With it, as you will be shown, a psychic master even sees through the earth, dissolves the cloud, appears to make mountains move, and performs no end of miracles. Sign. All right. I like what I'm hearing so far. How about y'all? The two scientific proofs of the pudding. Two indisputable scientific proofs exist that anybody can reawaken his primitive autoconscious to alter his whole being and his whole life. The first is a pathological proof which can be demonstrated on any such unfortunate victim in the course of a few years. The second is a psychopathic proof which could be displayed by anybody in an instant, should, be, should the proper situation present itself. These two proofs are syphilis and hysteria. First proof, syphilis. Leading pathologists call syphilis the great imitator. Its clinical manifestations are legion, for it can involve any organ or tissue and can simulate practically any disease. Many authorities indeed declare that it can simulate any disease. In other words, everybody's tissues contain an unknown quality which, when subjected to the proper pathological stimulus, namely treponema pallidum, or the syphilis organism, can, within the period of a few months or years, imitate practically any disease from which the body can suffer. Interesting. Second proof, hysteria. Hysteria is strictly a mental condition, yet the, hyst yet the hysteric can develop the symptoms of any disease which he believes he has, even though all physical tests of his tissues are found to be normal. In war, for instance, many a soldier has acquired hysterical blindness at their narrowly escaping bodily mutilation himself, but then watching a moment later his own buddy being blown to bits. Other soldiers who have been assigned to bury the putrefying dead have lost their sense of smell. Another name for hysterical disease is psychosomatic disease. These can vary from practically any kind of skin disease, muscle disease, rheumatism, backache, cramps, respiratory disease, asthma, hiccoughs, heart disease, gastrointestinal disease, genitourinary disease, glandular dysfunction, nervous system disease, in fact, disease of any part of the body. The hysteric merely has to convince himself that he possesses the malady and he will develop all its symptoms. He cannot easily be persuaded that he does not possess it either, despite the obvious clinical and laboratory findings. Should he remain convinced too long that he does have the disease, his tissues will respond to his conviction and develop that disease. What does all that prove? It proves that the psychic power command of the hysteric is so compelling that it can actually convert his mind or body into any state that he believes it is. 
his tissues can actually degenerate simply because he is convinced that they have. His psychic power command overrules the logical reasoning of his conscious mind and orders his primitive autoconscious to alter his mind or body into whatever condition he believes it has fallen into. He becomes, in fact, what he imagines he is. Very interesting. The power of the mind. You got to understand that you God. We all God. You feel what I'm saying? The obvious conclusion. Now, if you acquire the same control over your mind and body, which the hysteric possesses, but did so sanely and constructively, what wonders could you engender in your life? Sound like the placebo effect too. However, your conscious logical mind won't let you and your psychic power has become subordinated to it over the years. Your conscious logical mind won't let you. Now that's deep right there. I believe the Buddhist, the Buddhist masters the Buddhist monks and whatnot, they call that the monkey mind. That monkey mind we all have, that chattering conscious mind, that ego mind, that player, that player hater. I remember Brother Panic said that before. He, he called it the player hater, that player hater mind that we all have. You feel what I'm saying? That you be wanting to do this or do that. But then that player hater inside of you stop you from doing these different type of things. You feel what I'm saying? Lion or Judah, keep that lion with me. Lion or Judah with me. But that player hater stop you from doing these different things. You know, you have that conscious mind we have. They try to keep you in a certain comfort zone to keep you safe and secure and all that different type of stuff. You feel what I'm saying? When it's just like, yo, that comfort zone, that's where, that's where your dreams go to die. Let's continue. Cyclomancy, the secret of psychic power control, will liberate your psychic power from such subordination. That is how miracles are performed. The hysterical soldier became blind in an instant because he refused to see anymore and convinced himself that he had lost his sight. Beneficially, on the other hand, many a blind person has regained his lost sight in an instant simply because he believed totally in his healer and was convinced that he was seeing again. These two scientific proofs of the pudding show that the tissues of your mind and body already possess an inherent quality which enables them with the proper pathological stimulation to imitate nearly every disease if given the necessary time or opportunity. They also prove that your psychic power, when strong enough, can change the condition of your mind and body practically any way it wants to through its control over your primitive autoconscious. Learn what your amazing primitive autoconscious is and how to put it under psychic power control. The composition of your primitive autoconscious. Anatomically, your primitive autoconscious consists of 10 signif significant parts of your brain. These are, one, your psychic power center, the silent area of your brain or your forehead and temple area. Two, Two, your sensations recording center, your thalamus. Three, your organs control center, your hypothalamus. Four, your muscle coordination center, your extra pyramidal, pyramidal nervous system. Five, your brain horns, your psychic power artillery, your optic nerves and retina. Six, your seeing and hearing reflex centers your superior and inferior colliculi. Seven, your primitive seeing center and your highest visual center, your external geniculate bodies and your occipital lobes. Eight, your primitive hearing center, your, med your medial geniculate bodies. Nine, your psychic power vision, your eyeball. 10, your psychic power hearing, your auditory nerves and your temporal lobes. Okay, okay. Descriptions of the 10 parts of your primitive autoconscious. First part, your psychic power center. The silent area of your brain differs microscopically from the adjoining areas of your brain and contains a tested, astounding power over your mind and body, which your conscious and subconscious minds do not. Since this cortex has not been adequately analyzed, according to Gray, 
the mysterious power of this part of your body has to be your psychic power, for it has not been found to be anything else. Interesting. Scientifically, this center has been proven to control your power of attention, your memory, your digestion, your heart and kidney functions, your respiration, your blood pressure, your, sensation, your sensations of pain, temperature, and pressure. It is also connected to many of your most important message-receiving sensory areas, such as your somesthetic conscious, your somesthetic consciousness of your body area. The somesthetic area of your body is the consciousness of your body and your visual and auditory areas. Your psychic power center in brief is the most important region of your brain to develop for your unknown self. Once you learn how to rule your body with it, you can control at will your lungs, your heart, your liver and kidney functions, your digestion, your bowel movements, your blood pressure, your muscle coordination, your body temperature and much more as well as perform mental and physical feats which confound other people. It is like the one eye of Cyclops, Cyclomancy. Without it, Cyclops was a helpless giant. With it, he was invisible, invincible. Now, what came to my mind after reading that about how it's specifically when it said, once you learn how to control your body with it, you control that well, your lungs, heart, liver, kidney, digestion, bowel movements, blood pressure, muscle coordination, body temperature, and much more. What came to my mind when re reading that just now was the Buddhist monks, like the Buddhist masters or the Sufi masters or the uh, just the uh, the Hindu masters or just any other spiritual masters and how they have the ability to literally control like their heartbeat. Like I've seen stories, I've heard stories of these spiritual masters who could go for days and or weeks even with no beating heart, their heart not even beating or them not even breathing or things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can, you put a, you hook them up and it they're pronounced dead, yet they're still walking, talking and breathing, walking and talking whatnot. You feel me? So that tells you in and of itself how psychic power, that spiritual power can, when you attain spiritual power, spiritual power is everything. So with that being said, understanding that spiritual power is everything, you then understand why it is that the powers that be, these people, these devils, as you may call it, whatever you want to call them, you know what I'm saying? The elite, whoever you want, whatever and whatever name you want to attribute to the powers that be, the few that rule the many. You know what I'm saying? That put the masses, the 85%, if you're familiar with the 5 percenters, the 85% under this mind control. It's no wonder why they put so much energy, resources, and times and all these time and all these different things into destroying spiritual systems, into killing the shamans, the spiritual leaders, killing the uh the uh um um the spiritual teachers, uh destroying the different libraries in in Kemet, for example, the library, Alexandria and whatnot, destroying all these different things that has all these, that has all the spiritual knowledge, destroying the mystery schools and all that. It's no wonder why they had to go through so much, so far lengths in order to destroy these things. Because when you acquire spiritual power, you acquire the entire universe. You acquire the whole world, not even just the whole world, this mm -hmm. earth, but you acquire the universe existence itself when you acquire spiritual power. So it's no wonder why they had to go through such lengths in order to destroy it, destroy that knowledge and put the masses of the world into ignorance and make it so that we we all ignorant as to what our spiritual capabilities are. So much so to the point where now we have to we have to read books like this in order to remember how to do these things. You know what I'm saying? But it's a blessing, though. It truly is a blessing. It truly, truly, truly is a blessing that we're able to read texts like this in order to reawaken our spiritual centers in our body, reawaken our spirituality, our that dormant, the dormant abilities that we that we have, that those dormant abilities that at one point in time our ancestors, which are just us in the past, you know, had lived with, lived with and 
was using and just living with every single day in their everyday life. You feel what I'm saying? It's a blessing, truly. I remember there's a passage in the Bible in the New Testament where it was Jesus said something like, let the wise man become a fool so that he may be wise again. You feel what I'm saying? As in to understand that right now, me, as well as probably you who's watching this right now, you probably you you real ignorant when it comes to these spiritual abilities and the spiritual power and whatnot. You feel me? But even though that's that's true, as long as you acknowledge that you're ignorant, as long as you acknowledge that in this moment you're ignorant and you may be a fool in this moment, as long as you acknowledge that and you accept it, you're then able to acquire knowledge. You're then able to acquire wisdom. You're then able to acquire understanding so that you may be able to acquire this spiritual power. You feel what I'm saying? That we all had at one point in time, aka our ancestors, because like I said, our ancestors is just us, just in the past. You feel what I'm saying? So now we're able to acquire the spiritual power again. All right, let's continue. Except for your highest visual center in your temporal lobe, the other parts of your primitive autoconscious are not psychic power centers. They do, however, rule your muscles and various nervous systems. Your psychic power center is able to control your whole body only because it can rule all these other parts of your primitive autoconscious. Second part, your sensations recording center, your thalamus, is the region of your brain where you first feel pain. Differences in temperature and pressure, the position and movements of parts of your body, and contact over your hair clad parts or sensations of pleasure, all before your conscious mind is aware of them. Interesting. Your conscious mind then restrains and refines these sensations before it lets you respond to them. Wow, that's very interesting to think about. I'm gonna I'm gonna read that again just because. That, that just stood out to me. Your sensations recording center, your thalamus, is the region of your brain where you first feel pain. Differences in temperature and pressure, the position and movements of parts of your body, and contact over your hair-clad parts or sensations of pleasure, all before your conscious mind is aware of them. That's very interesting. Your conscious mind then restrains and refines these sensations before it lets you respond to them. I see. So what comes to my mind when I read that is that like maybe it's like this. Say you were to get burned, right? Say you were to like touch a stove or something like that. Then that nerve signal when traveling to your brain If you just felt the full force of it immediately, you might just flip the fuck out from just that little last burn, possibly. But it seems from me reading this, what it sounds to me like is like this part of your body, your sensations, recording center, your thalamus is essentially like, like if you feel this burn, it filters that pain or that sensation first through this center before you're able to respond to it. You feel what I'm saying? So that you don't just bug the fuck out. You don't flip the fuck out and lose your mind over, you know, you don't lose your mind over like some something little like that. Because like I meant, because it's essential because imagine if you seen a goddamn lion like this. Imagine you've seen a lion. Imagine you've seen a lion. You've seen a lion. You feel me? Then if you didn't have this, then your ass would bug, your ass would damn near just just have a heart attack right then and there. Your ass will just die immediately if, if you've seen that lion. But it seems to me like because you have this, then 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 when you see that lion, you're able to be like, oh, okay, what what the fuck am I am I gonna do? How am I gonna respond? You feel me? By ruling your sensations recording center with psychic power, therefore, you can control your feelings of pain, temperature, pressure, and pleasure. You can endure intense cold, for instance, and yet feel so warm that you perspire. Very interesting. Some Wim Hof. You can fill yourself with so much vibrant heat at will that you can arouse intense sexual desire in the opposite sex with your mere presence. 
You can banish awkwardness and acquire thrilling physical grace by developing a high degree of sensitivity to the position and movement of parts of your body. That applies even to your speech. In lovemaking, playing a musical instrument, typing or any skill requiring the use of your fingers, even including dentistry, surgery, nursing, massage, beauty parlor operator, and many, many others, you can excel by applying just the right pressure with your digits. Interesting. Third part, your organs control center. Your hypo, AKA your hypothalamus. is the command center both for your fighting nervous system, your sympathetic, and for your loving nervous system, your parasympathetic. It is also the command center for your emotions. Since both your fighting and your, ner your loving nervous systems control all the living functions of your body. You can control all the living functions of your body as well as your emotions at will. Once you acquire psychic power control over your organs control center. Yo, this is powerful. This is powerful. Wow. You can then, for instance, tremendously increase or decrease your appetite at will. In the laboratory, the digestive juices can be increased eightfold through your organs control center. In that way, you could control your weight with it unless your weight is changing due to a pathological reason, which then would require treatment. You could encourage your bowels to move regularly, banish fear and nervousness, fill yourself with invincible confidence, burst with tireless energy. As an impractical example for you, the yogi, by controlling both his sensations, recording in his organ control centers, can put himself into a state of suspended animation for weeks at a time and still live. That's kind of what I was talking about before with the Buddhist masters and all that. Fourth part, fourth part, your muscle coordination, coordination center, your extra pyramidal nervous system, AKA your extra pyramidal nervous system controls your muscle coordination. With it under psychic power control, you could perform incredible feats of body balance without practice. Increase your muscle power 10 times more than your muscles grow in size never get tired master much easier any skill requiring the use of your muscles such as any sport or activity for which you possess talent be it golf tennis track and field ball basketball wrestling acrobatics water sports skating skiing swimming ping pong volleyball baseball football weightlifting master much easier such social muscular activities as dancing ballet dancing bowling modeling graceful walking on the street or platform, driving a car, riding a bicycle. Muscle coordination saves you a tremendous amount of effort in anything you undertake physically, and yet it multiplies your muscle power and efficiency. Take an actual but simple example of muscle coordination and see how your muscle coordination center will do wonders for you. How your biceps lift the weight step by step. Step one, your biceps, the prime mover of the weight, contracts to lift the light weight. Step two, your triceps, its antagonist, is immediately relaxed by your muscle coordination center in order to let your biceps contract without opposition. Step three, your triceps do not relax completely for they contract too to break your biceps. They contract less than your biceps, break as in like you know when you break a car. They contract less than your biceps, however. Step four, the fixation muscles of your elbow also contracts thanks to your muscle coordination center to steady your elbow joint and let your biceps lift the light weight with the least waste of effort. And so your biceps lifts the light weight. How your biceps lift a heavier weight step by step. Step one, when you lift a heavier weight, your biceps contract more forcibly. Your triceps again immediately relaxes, but thanks to your muscle coordination center, it also contracts still more in order to put a stronger break on your biceps. Step three, additional fixation muscles, those of your shoulder and forearm, which contract only feebly before, also contract more forcibly now to steady your shoulder and wrist joints in addition to your elbow joint in order to let your biceps lift the heavier weight with the least waste of effort. This again is due to your muscle coordination center controlling your muscles. 
and and so your biceps lifts the heavier weight. How your biceps lift the heavy weight, step by step. Step one, when you lift the heavy weight with your biceps, nearly all the muscle fibers of your biceps contract. Step two, your triceps once more immediately relaxes, but it also contracts even more strongly to break your biceps. Step three, your muscle coordination center now causes practically all the muscles of your body to contract as fixation muscles in order to stabilize all the joints of your body and let your biceps lift the heavy weight with the least waste of effort. The muscles of your feet and legs, for example, contract to lock your ankles and knees in order to maintain your posture against the downward pull of the heavy weight. Those of your hips contract to lock your hip joints and keep them extended in the erect posture. Those of your back, chest, and abdomen contract to hold your head erect as well as to hold up your shoulder girdle and your thorax. Even the muscles of your face and brow contract into a frown as a result of the psychic power and determination exerted by your mind. In brief, by stabilizing your different joints during the lifting effort, all these sets of muscles allow your biceps to lift the heavy weight with smoothness and economy of strength. That enables it also to lift a much heavier weight and with much less energy than it could lift without their coordination. When you rule your muscle coordination center with psychic power, then you will become Herculean in power without even training. You will become as graceful as a swan without even practicing. And you will go about your daily chores as if you are tireless. You will also master new skills requiring grace, agility, or rhythm with astounding speed. Fifth part. Your brain horns, a.k.a. your psychic power artillery, is for psychic power projection too and psychic power reception from outside your body. It consists mainly of your optic nerves and your retina. Your retina is an outgrowth of your brain and a true nervous system of its own. It is unlike any other sense organ with the various heat, ray, and wave projections from your brain horns. You can send from it or receive in it messages or commands from any distance. With it, you can influence the health of people near you or far away. Win friends and control people and exert psychokinesis or psychic power upon inorganic substances. Sixth part, your seeing and hearing reflex centers. Your superior and inferior colliculi save you a tremendous amount of energy every day. They are not concerned with sensations but with reflexes. They bring you eye-catching pores by developing economy of motion, graceful cat-like movements, and enable your mind to function while you are in action to its maximum efficiency. That makes you very effective in business and social life. It also adds immeasurably to the attractiveness of your appearance. Seventh part, your primitive seeing center and your highest visual center, your external geniculate bodies and your occipital lobes. By awakening your primitive seeing center, you automatically possess two important visual centers instead of one. That alone blesses you with a power of sight which you have never before possessed. You can then read much faster for you possess four eyes instead of two. By also developing your highest visual center later, you increase your power to recognize, determine, and identify color and form and acquire a keener artistic eye. You can do likewise then in motion and excel at skills, callings, and sports as you never could before. Eighth part, your primitive hearing center, your medial geniculate bodies, with the mysterious cochlear electricity which it possesses and which you can develop enormously, your hearing can more nearly approximate the hyperacusity of the hysteric who can hear 16 times better than you and the radar hearing of the bat. Ninth part, your psychic power vision or your eyeball. By acquiring the ability of psychic power vision, the psychic master can acquire the microscopic and a telescopic eye and see through matter and peer into distances. 
by creating an astral tube, you yourself can see astrally at enormous distances. You can even reach out with the power in your eyes and touch people 20 feet away with it. For practical purposes, you can improve markedly both your near and distant vision. Tenth part, your psychic power hearing, your auditory nerves and your temporal lobes enables you to improve your own hearing considerably to unmask sounds with amazing proficiency when a great many sounds are heard at once, to feel sounds even before you hear them, to multiply your efficient reactions to sound with your psychic power driven cochlear electricity, to create an astral ear to receive sounds from faraway distances, and to improve your own hearing remarkably, as the blind do. In summary, by reawakening your primitive autoconscious, you can regain a superhuman amount of your dormant powers from head to foot mentally, physically, and astrally. That is why the potentials of your primitive autoconscious are so fantastic. In the next lesson, you will start to reawaken them. Learn first how to drive your psychic power into them to reawaken them. Take a sip of water real quick. Now, it is also said that when you become a spiritual or psychic master, you gain the powers and the abilities of all the different animals, you know? For, for example, you see like a squirrel or a bird. A squirrel can jump from a fence to the top of a tree just so quickly, whatever, right? A squirrel can just leap and just go about any distance, whatever. Now, in many mythologies and in many, many uh, spiritual texts, it is said that when you acquire the spiritual power, you not only acquire the power of the squirrel, you acquire the power of the lion, the tiger, the bear. You acquire this, the, the power of all the different animals in the animal kingdom. You feel what I'm saying? You are us, the so-called human being. We are that we are the consciousness, the intelligence, the all that is when we are in our powerful psychic spiritual state, there is no thing that one cannot do. Because you must understand that you are God. You know what I'm saying? We are God. And that's just the under that's just a that's just a basic just understanding. You get to that understanding within yourself first when you meditate. You feel what I'm saying? Through meditation first. That's something you got to understand first within yourself. But then after you understand that you are God and yet you are existence or whatever, you know, then the next step in understanding that after that is, okay, now that I understand who and what I am, I understand that I am the all. I am God. I am Allah. I am Jah. I am that. Then it's, then it's okay, what can I do? And then after you discover what can you do, okay, how do I do it? How do I acquire that ability once again? You feel me? Three steps for driving your psychic power into any part of your body. No matter what part of your brain or body you want to command with psychic power, always use the same technique. It consists of three simple steps. These are step one, give the command in your conscious mind. But if your conscious mind lacks the ability to execute it, transfer the command to your psychic power center. This step is done easily. Just think out your command, then send it to your forehead. Step two, drive your psychic power command from your forehead to and through the whole length of the nerve which carries it into the part of your brain or body which you want to rule. Step three, now implant your psychic power command into that part, and it will incite it to do as you wish. In lesson two, you will be taught how to execute these three steps with stupendous power, and you will then instantly tower over others. The dynamite concealed in your protoplasmic irritability. You are able to drive your psychic power command through your nerves into any part of your brain or body because of the dynamic concealed in your protoplasmic irritability. Irritability or the tendency to react to a stimulation is a fundamental property common to all protoplasma and your nerves. 
like all other living tissue, are composed of protoplasm. Everybody, though, differs protoplasmically. Each person carries his own distinct odor, as the dog or the cat can easily detect. Each individual even has his own aura color, aura shape, and telepathic receptivity. The irritability of protoplasm is concealed dynamite because it possesses an electrical potential. When protoplasm is stimulated or excited, even with psychic power, an electric current is sparked in it which flows along the full length of the tissue or organ of which it is a part. That is its concealed dynamite. This protoplasmic electric current, of course, is feeble, except in animals like the electric torpedo and eel. You need a delicate mechanism to detect it, but that renders it no less significant. With that concealed dynamite in your nerves, since your nerves are also protoplasm, you can drive your psychic power command through them to any part of your body or brain which you want to rule. The Disadvantages of Command Adaptation There are certain guides to follow, however, in order to extract the maximum efficiency from this concealed dynamite. Electrically speaking, nerve tissue does not exhaust itself. It promptly regains its electrified state once the electric current passes out of it into the destined tissue. But it does adapt itself to a constantly flowing current. Adaptation to all forms of stimulation, in fact, seems to be a universal property of protoplasm. That is why you should never drive your psychic power command through your own nerves or through those of other people. Longer than one or two seconds at a time, your nerves and theirs would adapt themselves to it and would no longer respond to it. You don't have to wait, nevertheless, before driving that same psychic power command through your nerves or theirs still more times. Just suddenly increase or decrease its intensity and that will stimulate your nerves or theirs to respond to it all over again. Finale. Now you know the fantastic potential of your primitive autoconscious and the scientific basis for it. You just need to find out how to put its different parts under psychic power control so that you can awaken it and start profiting swiftly and extraordinarily by making its fantastic potential work for you. This book, Cyclomancy, The Secret of Psychic Power Control, will do that for you. What developing, what merely developing 1% of your primitive autoconscious, un, what merely developing 1% of your primitive unconscious can do for you. You already know that your primitive autoconscious is your unknown self, but you don't have to awaken your primitive autoconscious completely. Just develop or awaken your unknown self by no more than 1% and you will be converted into a miracle among men. You can barely imagine what your mind can accomplish solely by controlling through your primitive autoconscious self. Your body physiology is biochemistry, is neurology, is psychology, and bioelectrics. Look what the yogis can accomplish with theirs. Yes, with it, you too can reach out for the mysterious powers of your mind and body, for powers which will stagger the imagination and which could multiply your effectiveness in everything you undertake by 109 times. Just think of it. Multiply your effectiveness as a person by 109 times. How could they achieve that? That can be simply explained. It is ex an accepted fact, first of all, that you use but one-tenth of your mental known self. In other words, nine times of what you use of your known self remains unused. But you use practically no part of your primitive unconscious so 100 times of what you use of your unknown self or of your primitive autoconscious remains unused. Hence, a total of nine times plus 100 times of both your known and unknown selves or 109 times remain unused. That is why the yogis and mystics accomplish miracles. They're using their mental powers in a proportion of 109 to your one. They are 109 times more effective than you with their minds, and the mind controls the body. No wonder they outclass you in the use of their minds and bodies. So, all my people that's reading this, best believe 
that after we finish reading this entire text, this is just this video right here is just part one. But after we finish reading this entire text, you you gotta understand you you a yogi, and you better be calling yourself a yogi, and you better be living as a yogi truly, if you a person that really take this stuff serious. Because I understand that a lot of people might watch this video, a lot of people might watch watch the many parts to this uh this series, which is this entire text, but. Most of you probably won't put in the effort and the work in order to do what we got to do in order to, you know what I'm saying, in order to do these things. You feel me? So you that's watching, don't be that. Be the person that puts in the work and actually applies these teachings to your life. You feel what I'm saying? Now, don't only just read this book, but read other texts that te that teach you uh, spiritual information. Read Read other mythologies and and different spiritual texts which teach you and show you these different spiritual things about yourself but you don't have to be 109 times more effective than other people in order to outclass them you need to be but one tenth more effective than they and they will not compare with you so just develop or awaken your primitive auto conscious by a mere one percent and you'll be using 11 percent of your combined known and unknown selves while other people will still be using only 10% of their combined selves. That will render you one-tenth or 10% more effective than they. But hold this in mind. In school, on the job, in athletics, in romance, in popularity, in business, in anything you undertake, if you surpass anybody by 10%, you will outclass them. A firm that consistently earns 10% more profit than a rival firm, everything else being equal, or drive that rival firm out of business. Why? Because the losing firm will steadily earn less and less as it loses more and more business to the first until it is outclassed by the first firm by 20%, then by 30% until it is driven bankrupt. The same rule applies in competition with people, socially or in business. At first, you outclass your rival by 10%. That routes him psychologically and discourages his best efforts. Before long, you outclass him by 15%, 20%, 25% and more. By then, he is vanquished and under your control. That is why you need to master how to develop your primitive autoconscious and use the hidden power of your mind and body by no more than 1%. So get started on it at once. So, like I said, that is part one. So that is part one, my people, to this series that we starting right here, Cyclomancy by Frank Rudolph Young, The Secret of Psychic Power Control. You feel me? This is just part one. Understand that we will be reading the entire text, the entire book. We're going to be doing this together, but we're going to do it in multiple parts. Each lesson is going to be one separate video, you feel me? Because I don't believe it's wise to just pack everything into one video you feel what i'm saying because that's that's a whole lot of information in the mind your psyche your subconscious needs to put in work to process the information that you bring into it you feel what i'm saying that's what meditation is for that's what contemplation is for that's what that's what sleep is for your deep sleep deep sleep is for you know taking all those different things from your day that you experience in your day that you brought into your consciousness and your mind processes these things for you. You feel what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is only part one. My name is J Benz the Light. You feel me? AKA J Benz the Way Right. J Benz the Light to Hootie Ja. Peace be to the gods on earth. This is part one. And like, comment, and subscribe as well. You feel me? Like, comment, and subscribe. And tell me any other text or any anything else you want me to go over. Anything else you want me to read. Just anything you want me to go over with y'all. And I'd be more than happy to, man. So with that being said, peace be to the gods on earth.